Hello there, I'm Seicharata. Today I want to talk about a very special company. They started selling pizza when they were in college, then later they set up a tech startup and they had some success, we're gonna talk about that. But the team was very exhausted. Uh, they would burn midnight oil, earn a few quid, but they weren't fulfilled yet. And they have attracted some arrogant people to the team, people who are very up themselves. It was an environment with a lot of plain politics. At the end of the day, they sold this company for 200 million to Microsoft. And with this money, they started to invest in various businesses, some very successful, others less so. But there is one that seemed quite promising and fun. It was a website where they would be selling shoes, and this business started growing and changing. Today, it's a company that sells more than $1 billion a year. And the secret is that instead of just selling shoes, they are delivering happiness. And this is the story of Zappos. If you want to learn more about this company and the founder, Tony Shea, I recommend a book. I'm gonna put the link to this book somewhere here on the screen. However, if you haven't got the time to read the whole book, don't worry. In addition to having read it myself, I also know in detail the work done by Tony Shea. I have some notes of some of his lectures, and I'm gonna share some of the highlights today and also make a few comments. So I hope you enjoy this presentation. This is a free sample of several videos that are part of our academy's entrepreneurship programs. And uh, speaking of which, Arata Academy is one of the brands that I own together with my partner, and uh, the work of Zappos has been an inspiration for the creation of our company. And I really hope that you can understand a little bit more about the way we work with this video. It will make me very happy if some of these ideas can be an inspiration to you in at least um, three ways. One, the way you do business in your company, if you are already an entrepreneur. But two, how you intend to do business in the future, if you just have an idea. And number three, at least the way you behave as a consumer, what kind of expectations you have when you're dealing with any business, any supplier. What Zappos has taught us was a rise in standards. We can no longer accept average or poor quality products or services, and anybody who is offering some not optimal service, some shoddy, product or service will not survive in this new market paradigm. Entrepreneurs are required to deliver always more quality and the consumers should also demand more satisfaction. And it all started with pizza. I think that this introduction is rather important to show a real example of someone who started from zero and will also help us to eliminate, to deconstruct some limiting beliefs that, oh, you know, somebody who's uh, working at the pizza parlor will never be able to build a billion dollar company. Well, guess what? Tony himself used to sell pizzas. He was the one in charge of hiring employees, purchasing ingredients, and even making some pizzas from time to time. And one customer in particular called his attention because he would turn up at night, he would buy a large pizza, and a few hours later he would come back and buy another large pizza. He looked like a binging glutton, but this guy ended up becoming Tony's partner and his name was Albert. What was Albert doing? He would buy a whole pizza and then he would sell it by the slice in another floor in the college building. So what Tony figured was that Albert didn't need any structure, fixed cost, staff, or any other problem. And to top it off, he would also have a profit margin much larger than the pizza making himself. So that was the time when Tony realized that he would like to have Albert looking the finances of his future enterprises. And in around 1996, he created a dot-com company called Link Exchange. It grew to have 100 employees. It was not a very nice place to work. The company didn't have a very good culture. And at the end of the day, they sold the Link Exchange for around 200 million. And then they began investing in different projects. And one of them was Zappos. At the time, Zappos was selling only shoes. And today, many people still think that Zappos is a shoe shop the same way they think Amazon is a book online shop, uh, even though they have hugely increased the range of products. It is very important to understand what the real business of the company is. So back in the day, companies that said that they were in the railroad industry, they eventually went bust. However, the railroad owners who really understood that they were rather in the transport business figured out that they should diversify their investments. So they went to the marine, air and terrestrial transport industries. 
And what about Zappos? What is the potential of a company selling shoes online? Surely it is smaller than that of a company that delivers happiness. Zappos has recently undergone a major change. Now they see the company as the provider for the best kind of experience for the customer. That's the business. And among the products that Zappos sell, you'll find cosmetics, clothes, kitchen accessories. However, Tony wants that in 10 years time, people look back and they cannot even believe that the company was only selling shoes in the beginning. In addition to that, they also don't want the company to be purely online. Zappos really wants to offer the best customer experience. This is the core of the business. And some people even suggest they could set up an airline company, which is completely different from their current operations. However, Tony Shea does not rule out this possibility. In 20, 30 years, it might be possible to also have an airline under the Zappos brand. And someone has shown that this idea is not impossible. That's Sir Richard Branson, Virgin founder. Virgin became popular as a music brand, but it has expanded to include airlines and other services. Virgin's mission, in Tony's opinion, is to be cool. And Zappos, on the other hand, wants to offer the best customer experience, the best shopping experience. Invest money on what really matters. With such a mission, does it make sense to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on TV commercials? No, it doesn't. Tony's decision was to take most of the money that would naturally go to advertising and then invest that money in customer experience. Well, so for instance, he has hired a team that would work in rotation and offer a round-the-clock phone support. Zappos would also offer free shipping, something that no one else was doing back then, and also invested heavily in training to provide a very nice and human service. And one of the craziest things that they proposed was the idea that the customer could buy 10 pairs of shoes, receive everything at home, they could try it all with their clothes that they have at home, and, you know, they could choose later if they would like to keep it or not. And the shipping for all of that, remember, is paid by Zappos. So, you know, some people might be a little bit concerned from the business perspective and think, well, these guys are probably losing money. Yes, they might be losing some money with all that shipping, but they would also be losing some of that money if they would be spending thousands and thousands of dollars, some ineffective advertising, some magazine that nobody would be paying attention to, or some ads that nobody would click on. So this type of word of mouth is the type of action that would end up paying much, much better. When you treat your customers well, you make sure that they will buy again. Around 75% of the orders at Zappos are from returning customers. And this should come as no surprise. Every good trader knows that if the product is good and if the price is right, if the service is good, the customer will probably come back. The most difficult sale is the first one. If everything else meets or even exceeds the expectations, the real profit will come from the continued relationship. Zappos has started with zero sales in 1999 and well, in 2008 they had more than 1 billion sales. The main element for growth was that the buyer would come back again and again for new purchases. Use the telephone as a relationship element. Nowadays, marketing experts wonder how can they get attention for customers because there is so much competition, there is so much noise. Everyone has banners on the internet. And if you flip a magazine, half of the pages are advertising. A powerful tool and often overlooked is the telephone. That's a type of communication channel that has a high attention from the person who's talking. Generally, lasts around five minutes and the client will remember that for a very long time and even tell friends and family about something really remarkable. Identify intrinsic deficiencies in the business model. It is very frustrating when you order an item on a website and then two weeks later you receive an email saying, oh, we are sorry, but this item is out of stock. So why does that happen? It happens because that item was not actually in stock at the shop. It was drop shipping. 
That means that the retailer would buy from another provider after they received your money, after they received your order. Zappos has also started business using some drop shipping, but now they have abandoned that model to avoid this type of problem. The company has understood that this is a flaw in the business model. No matter how many advantages you may have from not keeping stock, this is a problem. So when it comes to balancing costs and benefits, that model was not aligned with the mission to provide the best possible experience. Surprise the customer. For most of these recurring clients that they have, instead of sending the item within the five regular days, they do now a default upgrade for next day delivery. And this creates the wow effect that makes the customer tell all his friends and family. Is this an additional expense? Yes, it is. But then again, it's something that will probably deliver a much better return on investment than spending money on those expensive banners on one-click ads or other types of uh, advertising that at the end of the day, nobody really pays attention to give up immediate profit to build relationships. There is another crazy thing that Zappos does is that if you get in touch with them, you, if you're looking for a pair of shoes that they don't have, they will look at the websites of different competitors and if they find the shoes there, they will send the link so that the customer can buy from the competitor. They are not trying to maximize each individual sale. They are not concerned with profiting 15 bucks from the sale of one pair of shoes. What they want is to build a lifetime relationship with the customer. Hiring the right people. The hiring process at Zappos is one of the main gates to success. The hiring manager does this normal work, checking the experience of the candidate, uh, their technical expertise, the requirements for the position, all of that, uh, just like anybody else. But the human resources department also has to check if the candidate is ready for the culture of the company. The candidate must pass both processes. It is no use to hire somebody who has a lot of technical skills but doesn't fit the company culture. So one of the questions asked is whether the candidate is feeling lucky. And why is that? Well, Tony knew about a scientific experiment that called volunteers and asked people to rate themselves on a scale from 1 to 10 how much they consider themselves to be lucky or unlucky. And after that, these uh, volunteers were required to Take a look at the newspaper and count the number of pictures in it. Actually, this newspaper was a mock-up. It was a fake newspaper and some of the headlines had phrases such as, hey, the number of pictures in this paper is 37. You can stop counting now. Just call the examiner and you will receive $100 as a bonus. Now, the very interesting thing about this experiment is that the people who consider themselves unlucky, they just didn't see those hints. So they would keep on counting picture by picture. Yes, they would get the result right, but those who had considered themselves to be lucky in the very beginning, they would find the clue and then they would call the examiner and receive the bonus. So this kind of shows that there are no lucky or unlucky people. At the end of the day, luck is about being open to situations and opportunities that are just in front of us. The importance of training after recruitment. No matter if you are a lawyer, an accountant, or a designer, you will go to the very same training that all the public attendants will be given. And this is a four-week program that will teach you everything about the company's culture, about the company's history. You stay two weeks on the phone taking calls from the customers. That's very important. And all of that is done because they are very serious about customer service because this is the essence of what the company does. So it's not just one uh, separated department. In calendar days, anyone can be called to lend a hand in taking calls. In the training, at the end of the first week, they make an offer. They will pay the new staff for the work week plus $2,000 to go away. And this offer continues during the four weeks of training. So basically this means, hey, here's some money for you if you want to get out of here. And this is going to filter people who just are looking for money. $2,000 is a quite good money because the uh, average salary per hour is around $11. So they do that because they know that the employee who is just looking for some quick buck is going to get out of the company anyway whenever they receive a better financial offer. 
So having that person in-house would be kind of a waste of money, a waste of time, a waste of training, a waste of management. And what they surprisingly found out is people who did not accept the offer were coming to that conclusion on their own and ended up becoming more committed. In short, Zappos is happiness in a box. When they open the box and experience the relationship with the customer, the employees receive happiness from the culture of the company. Zappos delivers happiness. How to deliver happiness for your business? Now let's see some practices that you can adopt in order to also deliver happiness. So number one is to invest in creating the culture of your company. If you create the right company culture, everything else falls naturally into place. You have a good inner game and then the outer game will happen effortlessly. Two, find your core values. Zappos has 10 core values that they are deeply committed to and there are many companies who just have some values but they don't really mean it. It's just for the sake of having them. So the core values are something that you can commit to, you can hire staff, you can fire staff and you can carry out performance assessment goals based on them. So here are Zappos um, core values. Deliver wow through service. Embrace and drive change. Create fun and a little weirdness. Be adventurous, creative, and open-minded. Pursue growth and learning. Build open and honest relationships with communication. Build a positive team and family spirit. Do more with less. Be passionate and determined. Be humble. On being humble, it doesn't matter if the professional is a very good one or not. If he's arrogant, well, he is going to contaminate the culture of the company. That's not very good. So if you're the type who will say, well, you know, yeah, I understand, it's kind of good for Zappos, but I don't think it's gonna work for my business. There are many good offers out there. I've done uh, research on corporate culture, and they said that the most important thing is to have consistency and alignment. Consistency and alignment. People within the company must be on the same page, no matter what the exact values are. How to build a valuable brand. So first, you have to decide what is that you want to do. You can make a lot of money without having to dedicate to the brand. For example, drop shipping was the initial business model adopted by Zappos, but over time they figured out it was not really a very good distribution model. The clients were not very happy sometimes. And then they moved to a hybrid approach where only 25% was not drop shipping. They would get the most likely to be sold items and keep in stock. But another day they took the time to think what they were doing and what they wanted to do in the future. They would like to have a shoe store or something a little bit more meaningful. And then they decided that they wanted to be known for the best possible customer service. And for that, they had to give up that 25% of income that was easily made with drop shipping, and that 25% has generously paid off in other ways. Find your values and culture. Culture is important, but it only becomes clear when you decide on the list of your main values. So ask people to cooperate, give you ideas about values that you should incorporate. In the case of Zappos, after doing that, they were left with a very long list, around 40 items, and then they consolidated what was possible over a period of one year, and then the list was down to something around 10 items that I read for you that could be memorized and incorporated by all employees. For those who are thinking that this whole conversation is not very relevant because maybe they don't have a company yet, or their company is very young, Tony Shea himself says that the ideal thing is to do this from day one of trading. So the task of defining culture becomes increasingly difficult as the company grows. So to overlook the culture was one of the reasons why that company, Link Exchange, had become an unbearable workplace. Commitment to transparency. Zappos has a newsletter called Ask Whatever, and anybody can send questions about finance, or company planning, or any other silly question. Suppliers have access to sales reports, inventory, strategies, and all of that can fall into the wrong hands, uh, the hands of competitors, and that risk is compensated by the large number of additional people who look into the business with very attentive eyes and point out problems before they happen. Overview. In the beginning, the company was focused on selling shoes, but then they decided that they wanted to be in the best customer experience business. That's something magical happening here. 
employees became more dedicated and passionate about the company. There was a strong sense of meaning in the new phase and the company was not just trying to make money. And then the suppliers began to like the company better as well. Customers felt that everyone in the company was fully engaged and that brought much more positive effects. Focus on the vision, not on the money. Instead of asking what the niche is, what is the most lucrative market, you can ask a different question. What will be the niche that you're ready to work within for 10 years, even without making profit? See, there is a difference between motivation and inspiration. Inspire your employees with a greater vision connected to the company's core values. That is better than motivate them with some rewards or incentives. Build relationships. And when we talk about networking, many people think about those events in which you have to go and exchange business cards with everybody. And there's a little bit of a take and give philosophy, not very nice. It will direct your focus of attention into the wrong things, which generally are short term. Instead of trying to network, you can meet people, get to know them as individuals without having some plan, some expectation. If you pay attention, you'll find very interesting things about people you meet and within a few years, very interesting things can happen. That is the strength of the weak connections. People who are very close to you generally are aware of the very same opportunities as you. They they are living in the very same world as you. And when you begin to develop relationships with people living in completely different environments, some very interesting things can happen. Tony says that at Zappos, greater things seem to have happened by pure luck and the same thing goes for life. So start meeting people without a particular purpose. Build your team. Hire people slowly and fire them fast. People more or less engaged are not good enough. You will have a lot to work on with them. If a person is not suitable for a coach or is not getting their hands dirty as expected, that will slow you down. Train your team. Ask each candidate on a scale from 1 to 10. What are the chances that you'll be working with us 10 years from now? Usually, they won't stay if they don't feel like they're growing. If you invest in employee training, they will stay longer. Think in the long run. Don't look for short-term profit. Keep your focus on the customer who will return and buy again and again and again. See how interesting. Everyone knows that customer service is important. Everyone knows that company culture is important. Few companies actually invest in either because the return is not easily measurable since these results will only appear after a few years. There is no such thing as overnight success. The reason for us to start this whole conversation with this pizza company is that Zappos started just like that. This pizza event was, at the end of the day, a great learning experience. It has taught them a lot for their next businesses. So let me ask you a question now. What is your pizza parlor today? What are you doing today that, you know, is the starting point for what you're going to build? I think that no matter where you are now, you need to realize that this is the part of a much greater path. All right, let's talk about happiness. Unfortunately, many people think that talking about happiness is kind of a, I don't know, like a self-help thing, some fluffy woo-woo. But at the end of the day, it is possible to go much farther and speak of happiness from a perspective that can bring more tangible benefits. For instance, when you ask anybody, what is your goal in life? Can get a lot of different answers. People will say something like, well, I want to find a girlfriend. I want to change jobs or whatever. And when we ask why, then we can get many different answers again. You can ask, you know, why do you want a girlfriend? Oh, because uh, I want to be happy. Why do you want a job? Well, uh, I want a job to pay my bills, to make money. Okay, but why do you want money? And then the person will say, well, because I want to be happy. Why do you want to be healthy? To run a marathon. Okay, but why do we want to run this marathon? Well, because I think that will make me happy. So the idea is that ultimately, the answer is always the same. 
We want happiness. People are very bad at predicting what will make them happy. Everyone thinks that they will be happy if, I don't know, when they win the lottery. But if we examine the lives of the lottery winners, usually they get even worse and unhappier after winning. So that is why it is important that we study what happiness is, not in the sense of self-help, but by examining psychology, positive psychology more specifically, and what happens in our brain. Even something as simple as running marathons has an ideal training process. You won't go running around the block and say that you're suddenly ready. You have to prepare yourself properly. And the ideal way is not intuitive. You have to run slowly during the training and to do it right, you have to do some research, you have to get a coach. The point is that everyone thinks that they know what happiness is, but some research is required because these things are not intuitive. Tony Shea is a guy who is very interested in this topic. After all, his businesses that generate more than $1 billion in annual sales are structured basically on the concept of happiness. So here are some of his comments about happiness. You can increase happiness with higher perceived control. Instead of restraining the career development of an employee by giving them some annual pay raises, it is better to give them options. So if you want to have a pay raise, you can please go learn something new, something useful for the company. If the employee does the training to answer customers through social media, then you can give them a small pay raise. So if this employee wants to learn about fraud control, you can train them and you can give them another pay raise. Now, for those who want to stay quiet and keep on answering the phone, keeping their same routine as before, no problem. It's just that they will not receive the same pay raise as those who are always learning things new, always enhancing their skills. So with this, Zappos has more than 50 different training courses and the idea is to leave each individual in control so they can do what is best for them. You can increase happiness with a higher perceived progress. In regular companies, you can start as an assistant and then you can get a certificate after 18 months and become an assistant buyer. And then after 18 months, you can become a buyer and so on. So the process of becoming a buying manager in a company, a traditional company like that, can take up to three years. In the case of Zappos, instead of having to stay as an assistant for 18 months, you can become level one in six months. Then you can go to level two in another six months and then you can go to level three after another six months. So at the end of the day, the, the total amount of time is the same, six, 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 18 months. But here, Zappos is breaking down into smaller blocks, and these smaller blocks make it easier to visualize and understand the progress. As a final story, Tony Shea likes to tell about how he was in a group of friends uh, drinking some after party, and they arrived at the hotel very tired, around 3 a.m., and there was a girl who was very hungry, she wanted to eat a pizza. The problem is that the hotel was not going to serve any type of hot food after midnight. They only had some chips or chocolate cookies or something like that. Everybody was drunk and they were a little bit creative. So one of these people wanted to call Zappos because they said, oh, come on, our company delivers happiness. So why not? Let's call Zappos. So the cool thing is that uh, when this uh, friend of Tony called, uh, the person on the phone uh, was very polite, very attentive, and they told the whole story, you know, uh, yeah, I went out for this party, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to find some food, but there is nothing, you know, no, no warm food here at the hotel. So the person at Zappos was listening very attentively, and at the end said, oh, okay, so uh, I did a research here. There are five restaurants in your neighborhood that are still open, and uh, if you want, uh, I can help you to have a warm pizza delivered to you. So in short words, uh, the company behaves always like that without a rehearsed text, without a scripted formula. And this is excellence. This is delivering happiness. What is your opinion about that? What can we learn from a company like Zappos? I am Seich Arata from Arata Academy. And if you want more information about our courses, you can go to arataacademy.com.